Hi, third grade learners. For those friends who go to Nicely or Metzger Elementary Schools, I haven't yet had the privilege of meeting you. So let me take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Miss Krause, and I am a third grade teacher at Hutchinson Elementary School. Now, for those friends who do go to Hutchinson, hi, everyone. I am so excited to be back with you. Now, for everyone, I want you to know how much each of your teachers miss you. Now, today in our math class, we are going to revisit a topic that Miss Tusi introduced you to yesterday, and that is the topic of area. Now, if you remember, she told you yesterday that area is the amount of space that's inside a shape. Another way to put that is area is the number of square units needed to cover a plane or a flat figure without overlapping. Now, if you remember, she talked to you about counting the number of square units. So to figure out what the area of this shaded rectangle is, you could simply count how many squares are inside of it. And if you counted each of those, you would find that there were 18 square units, remembering that you have to use the term square, whether it's units, centimeters, inches, and so on. Now, there are two different methods you can use to figure out the area of the rectangle. One is what she taught you. You can count the covered squares and you would get 18 square units. But there's another way. You can view it as an array. The first thing you would do is you would figure out how many rows are going across and you can see that there are three of them. And then you would figure out how many columns. The columns are going down and you would see that there are six of those. So a multiplication array would be three times six and three times six equals that same answer of 18 square units. So you could get the area either way. Now let's use that same concept and apply it to these three rectangles. Let's take a look at this bright pink one and you can see that going down there are five rows and the columns going across there are four of them. So we have the multiplication fact five times four. And what is five times four? If you know it, go ahead and say it out loud. Five times four equals, you're right, 20 square units. Let's take a look at the green rectangle. Going down, we have one, two, three, four, five, six rows. And going across, we have one, two, three columns. So six times three is, say it out loud, Yes, 18, six times three equals 18 square units. Now let's take a look at this last one, the blue one. We have one, two, three rows, and then going across, we have one, two, three. So we have the multiplication problem of three times three. Do you remember what it's called when you have a multiplication fact where you have two of the same factors? like two times two or three times three or five times five? Yes, it's called a square fact. But in this one, three times three equals nine square units. Good job, third grade learners. Now let's take it just a step further and see if we can answer this question. What if they told you that you needed to draw and shade a rectangle with an area of 24? So we know that the final answer has to be 24. So we have to think of two factors. So when we multiply them together, it would be 24. Well, there are quite a few of them. So I'm going to just start you off and say that we're going to use the number three. So you can see that I filled in three squares going down. So what number times three equals 24? Three times, you're right, eight. Three times eight equals 24. So I've filled in eight boxes going across and I'm gonna fill in the other two rows. So three times eight equals 24. But there's another multiplication fact that I thought of right away. And it did not begin with three, but it began with the number four. So I'm going to fill in four boxes going down. And I have to think four times what equals 24? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. That's six. 
So I'm going to fill in the six and then fill in the other two rows. So four times six gives me an area of 24 square units. Now that brings me to a really important question. I want you to think about this. Based on what we just learned, is it possible to determine or figure out the area of a rectangle if you are given the length and the width? For example, take a look at this green rectangle. You can see the length of it is 7 inches and the width of it is 3 inches. Now, if we know that, we can figure this out, that 7 boxes going across and 3 going down and then fill in all of those square units and you would get a total of 21. The area is 21 square inches. But what if we could come up with an easier way to do that? We all love to have easier ways, don't we? We know with our math practice standards that there's more than one way to solve a problem. So if we take a look at this one and we say that to find the area, we can multiply the length and the width, which is what we just did. So 7 times 3 equals 21 square inches. This brings us up to learning a formula. Now, a formula is a step-by-step -step process. And if you can remember this, it will help you find area. And it is A equals L times W. And I want you to think about what those three letters could be. I bet you know. Sure enough, the A stands for area. The L stands for, yes, length. And the W is width. So that means area equals length times width. To find the area, you multiply the length times the width. So let's take a look at these three rectangles. The pink rectangle is a three by five rectangle. So if we take three times five, the area would be 15 square inches. Good job, third grade. Now take a look at the green one. We have seven centimeters and one centimeter. Do you remember the identity property of multiplication? Any number times one equals itself. So seven times one, what would the area for that be? Yes seven square centimeters. And then the last one, we have a six by seven rectangle. So six inches times seven inches equals 42 square inches. How do you feel about that? Do you think you did well? I bet you did. So now let's start and look at another way. What if we knew the area, we knew the end, and we knew one of the sides? Could we figure out the unknown side? Well, let's think about that. We know that area equals length times width. We already know that the area is 27, and we know one of those sides, but we don't know the other one. So we have to think, what number times 3 equals 27? Do you know? I bet you do. Three times nine equals 27. So the unknown side is nine. Let's take a look at this next one. With the blue rectangle, the area is 60. So 60 equals 10 times what? Well, 10 times six equals 60. So the unknown side is six. With the orange, the area is 12 square inches. So three times what equals 12? Three times? You got it. Four. Three times four. So the unknown side is four inches. And the last one is hard, but I bet you can do it. The area is 56 square centimeters. So seven times what equals 56? If you said eight, you're right. Now, here's a challenge problem that we're going to end with. So I want you to put on your thinking caps, fasten them underneath your chin, and turn on that power. Take a look at this problem. Each desk in Mr. Larman's classroom has a length of three feet and a width of two feet. So if he takes four desks and he pushes them together to make a team, what would be the combined area of the desks? Well, let's take this. We're going to 
break it down. We're going to chunk it up into smaller parts. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a picture and label what we know. So I know that my desk is three feet by two feet. So there's one. And then Mr. Larman pushes one right beside it. And it's the same three by two. And then a third one. And then a fourth one. And we made a rectangle. Now, when we take a look at this, I think, hmm, the width is two and two, which is four. And the length is three and three, which is six. So I know those two dimensions. Now I know that area equals length times width. So if I do six times four, six times four is 24. So I would know that my total area is 24 square feet. All right, that is awesome. So to sum this up, let's remember that there are two methods to figure out the area. We can count the covered squares, or we can remember that area equals length times width. If you remember that, you will be able to solve the area of any problem that you get that is a plain rectangle. So thank you so much for all of your attention and all of your hard work today. Go ahead and practice on some of the pages and we will pick up again soon. Thanks so much, third grade.